Now, a basic sponge and baking soda can make a great eraser for little grease spots, fingerprints, and stains on your walls, or many other painted areas, such as furniture or wood fences. Just sprinkle a bit of baking soda on your dry sponge and scrub the stain area in a circular motion. And then use a clean, dry cloth to wipe the baking soda off to get rid of any remaining dirt. If you're worried that this technique might ruin the paint, try just a bit of soda first and see how the surface reacts. If you want to extract the maximum amount of juice from your lemon or lime, put them first in a microwave for 15 seconds. After that, give them a little roll on a hard surface. And now, feel free to use your manual juicer. When you smash some glass or pottery on the floor, it can be pretty hard to notice and pick up all the tiny fragments, especially if the glass is transparent. Guess what can help you? A slice of bread. After you remove all the big pieces, carefully wipe a thick slice of bread across the floor to pick up any tiny fragments. They should just get stuck in the bread. But make sure to do this very carefully or just put on protective gloves. And don't absentmindedly make yourself a sandwich right afterwards. Hey, just saying. If you're a huge fan of garlic, here's a tip for you. Cut one garlic bulb in half and rub an empty bowl for a nice flavor. Now you can put your pasta, risotto, or salad in the bowl and enjoy your meal. Pringles tubes are made from a mixture of paper, plastic, and metal which makes them a good option to organize groceries. You can paint the tubes in a plain color to make them match your stylish, minimalistic kitchen and then attach removable labels on the side. Have you ever struggled with threading a needle? Here's an easy way out. Place your toothbrush on the table and put the thread across the bristles of the brush. Now gently push the needle down over the top. The bristles will help you poke the thread up through the eye effortlessly. Once you got the loop, just use your fingers to pull it through. If you've got these annoying tea stains on your favorite mug that won't wash off, try to apply some toothpaste to your sponge. This is also applicable when you need to make your dirty cutlery shine. It's best to use a mildly abrasive sponge. It's pretty helpful when it comes to removing dark spots on dishes. Now let's say you've recently received a really gorgeous bouquet. But the flowers got this sad look in a blink of an eye. You can extend their living very easily and almost free of charge. First, fill the vase or vase with fresh water and put a couple of teaspoons of sugar. This will help to nourish the flowers. Before you put the flowers back into the vase, cut about an inch off the stem. But make sure to slice it at an angle like this. This trick will increase the surface of water absorption. Repeat this with all the stems, especially with hard ones. Now put the bouquet back into the vase or vase. The flowers should cheer up within 12 hours. If you suffer from cold feet, put them into a vase or vase. No, wait. Use a hairdryer to warm up your slippers before using them. This tip is also applicable to your outdoor winter shoes. Speaking of feet, pew, there's a great way to get rid of unpleasant smells. Apply about 10 drops of your favorite essential oil on two cotton balls. Now place the balls into the shoes and leave them overnight. Remove them in the morning and enjoy the fancy smell. You can also mix a couple of your favorite fragrances to customize your shoe fragrance even more. If your drain is a bit dirty and smelly, there's an epic tip to solve this issue. Put down a couple of spoonfuls of baking soda and pour down a little vinegar. And now step back and enjoy the show. It will foam up and help loosen any dirt. We've all tried to light a match outdoors in windy weather and failed. Well, we've been doing it all wrong. There's an easy way to prepare a matchstick in advance using a sharp knife. Carefully carve back the four corners just behind the head of the matchstick. Then repeat the same technique one more time so it looks like this. These eight little splinters will help create a stronger, wind-resistant flame. If you have a small wardrobe with limited space for hanging new clothes, remove some metal pull tabs from the tops of old drinking cans. They can make the perfect holding loops for fixing the second hanger. Just put the ring over the hook. This is how you can double and even triple the storage space on one hanging rail. If you need to make an emergency candle, you can use one very common item from your fridge. Have you guessed what it is? Butter. Cut off a piece of chilled butter and place it on a heat-proof dish. 
poke a hole straight down through the center using a toothpick or a wooden stick. Now we need a wick. You can use a common cotton string or twine. Cut the corresponding length and poke it through the hole so it goes all the way to the bottom of your candle. Gently coat the end of the wick with butter and light up your brand new DIY candle. Use hair straightening tongs to smooth out those annoying creases on your tie. Or let's say you're working in a shop and you have to deal with fluffy piles of cash. The tongs will help you iron your money to put them in smaller stacks, which then fit neatly into your backpack. Hey, let's not go there. Wow, this zipper is tough. Why can't it slide smoothly like all other zippers? But don't rush to throw away your coat. Grab a bar of soap and gently rub it up and down against the zipper. Repeat it on both sides. Can you feel the difference? Cut one leg off your old tights and put two long cardboard tubes inside it. Go ahead and thread it under your internal door with one tube on each side. This will protect you from any draft because the tights will seal up any gap under the floor. You can also use this trick when you need to make a full blackout in the room. Just make sure to use thick black tights. Let's say you're visiting a conference in another city, and your schedule will be very busy. You can prepare your outfits for each day in advance and put them into different compartments of your hanging clothes storage organizer this way. Now, put it right down into your suitcase, zip it, and you're ready to go! When you arrive at the hotel, you can just carefully pull out this organizer and hang it in the closet in just two seconds. But don't forget to take the shoes, too. Is there a way to drive a nail into a wall without hurting your fingers? The answer is yes. Grab your comb and push the nail in between the prongs. This way, you'll keep your fleshy fingers far away and safe. And once you've got it started, you can easily slide out the comb and finish driving the nail. If you need an emergency metal scrubby sponge to wash your pot or pan, use a piece of tin foil. Crumple it up into a ball, apply a little bit of dish soap, and your brand new sponge is ready. Now start scrubbing and get ready to be amazed! It works really well, huh? By the way, the tin foil doesn't have to be new. You can recycle the piece you've already used for cooking. And the final tip is for perfectionists. If your shower head has a hard water buildup, the water won't come out straight. To fix this, fill a plastic bag with plain white vinegar. Then put the shower head inside the bag, attach it with a band, and leave it overnight. In the morning, you can give your shower head a little scrub with an old toothbrush or clothes brush. This should help remove the remaining hard water dirt. This trick is also applicable for faucet heads. Hey buddy, looks like you had some fun in the great outdoors. As adorable as those paw prints look, your mama still needs to clean them. Spreading soda over the carpet and then vacuuming it works like magic for such cases. Artistic people can be messy sometimes. No judgment here, I know it's all part of the creative process. But this hack will actually help save time from cleaning only to paint more. I think that's more than enough laundry detergent. Yep, she agrees with me. There's a way to make sure he uses the right amount next time. Just put the ice tray in the freezer and you'll have yourself jelly detergent cubes. Hey, this will save you money too, you know. Cleaning your brushes is such a bore. It's definitely something that tests one's patience. This shaving foam hack will save you a lot of time. I feel like that amount of hair will clog the sink, though. Remember what parents always say, wash your hands before eating something. But looks like that's not an easy task with those melted soap bars. A couple of rubber bands will help you save your soap. It won't be touching water all the time, and therefore, it'll last longer. Oh, man. I hate it when bottles get all dirty inside. If you're not Mr. Fantastic with the ability to stretch your body into any shape, then this looks like an impossible task. Hey, wait, maybe I was looking at it the wrong way. Magneto's powers will work perfectly fine here. I feel like you'll need a stronger magnet, however. 
Wow, this bottle looks brand new now. Don't you just hate that cooking and cleaning takes forever, but eating the dish you made takes like 15 minutes? Guess that guy leaves all the hard work to the lady. Don't worry, miss. There's a way you can avoid this disaster. Just cover the surfaces with stretch film, and that's it. Now you don't need to get anxious about all the cleaning you'll have to do later. Hope this won't cause you to be late for your work. Because how are you going to explain this to your boss? You can't just say, I had to wait for the stinky odor to go away. It's always a real struggle to get the corners, am I right? But it's nothing a couple of straws can't fix. No dust left behind is the motto. You can firmly clean all the nooks and crannies that the regular vacuum head can't get to. If you're a jar collector like I am, then you already got everything you'll need for this hack. This is what being smart looks like, everyone. By the way, looks like you've been postponing doing the dishes for a while now, huh? Don't worry, no judgments. We've all been there. Those toothbrushes were basically swimming in there. But the glass filling up with water is inevitable, really. However, Orbeez balls can make the process a lot slower. Somebody needs to replace the paper towel. But don't head to the store just yet. I suggest you ditch paper towels altogether and go for this reusable option. You'll be saving a lot of bucks. Thank me later. Whoa, have you been collecting dirty makeup sponges or what? Don't use them until they're all clean. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure they'll give you pimples. Looks like this is going to take a while. But the satisfaction you'll get once you see them all clean will be worth it. These kind of look like Easter eggs to me. By the way, do you really need that many sponges to do your makeup? It's all fun and games until someone spills all the glitter on the floor. Worry not, we got you. Hey, good to see you're recycling. No, you don't need a bigger bin, trust me. All you need is to know this one hack. And let's get this one thing straight. I know this is science, but it sure feels like magic. Honey, I shrunk the trash. Look at the difference here. It's a relief to see you don't have a pile of dirty dishes like the lady before. But how are you going to explain that sink? Seems like you've been ignoring it for quite some time now. That's why you need something strong to scrub there. But I have a better solution, one that won't tire you. Just apply a coat of dish soap and soda mixture all around the sink and wait. I wouldn't believe how it works wonders if I didn't see it with my own eyes. You're gonna hurt your back and knees cleaning like this. You know, robot vacuum cleaners don't need coffee breaks, right? So put that thing to work. In the meantime, you can just relax and maybe even start reading the book you bought six months ago. No matter how many times you clean the stove, it always gets dirty at the end of the day, right? Well, not anymore. Hey, I think I'm going to give this a try using glitter glue. It'll help make things more fun. You should have bought a trash bin with a lid to avoid the awful stench, you know? Although this hack won't make the trash smell good or anything, it will at least help keep your bin fresh and nice. I know this is not a food hacks video, but that doesn't stop me from wanting some snacks now. Even if you're too old to play with slimes, it might be a good idea to keep one at home for stuff like this. If I were you, I would still disinfect that with antibacterial wipes or something, just in case. Hey, it's her turn to pick the movie now. Uh-oh, someone's forgotten to add laundry powder to the shopping list. 
That's okay. You can still make your own with everyday things, such as baking soda and a soap bar. This lady is one of the lucky ones because she has a dishwasher. Placing a piece of lemon, even one that's been juiced, will help freshen the load and leave your dishes looking shinier. This is why I never wear white socks if I'm going to visit someone else's house. Because I don't really want to see how dirty their floors might be, you know? Using bleach for situations like this may help, but it might also ruin your garments. That's why this hack is the better option to make white clothes look great again. You might want to clean the microwave after you're done, though. This phone case looks like it's been through some tough stuff. Let's give it the second chance it deserves. All you need to do is apply WD-40 spray, pour some soda, and rinse it out. By the way, if you have sensitive skin, you might want to wear protective gloves to avoid irritation. Better safe than sorry. Cleaning stubborn stains on a glass stovetop can be tricky. There's always the risk of causing scratches on the surface. That's why any type of scrubbing or scraping action is not advised. Did you know that according to one poll, an average person spends more than six days a year washing dishes? Then there's all the other cleaning stuff that needs to be done. But knowing the right hacks will save you a lot of time and make your life so much easier. Wow, your shoes are definitely cleaner than this house. Who knew shoelaces would work like a charm when it comes to getting rid of all the dust and rust? Is it time to go to bed yet, or are you tired of all the work you've done around the house? I was being sarcastic. Your partner did all the work. So saving her toothbrush is the least you can do. Here's how you can protect your bank card from potential fraudsters. Use a marker and cover the last four digits. You can also use a sticker that's easy to remove and place it over the security code. Have you had a house guest that didn't use a coaster? Get a hairdryer and hold it a couple of inches away from the stain. Blow it on medium heat for a couple of minutes to evaporate the watermark. If a faded ring remains, mix equal amounts of vinegar and olive oil in a bowl. Wipe it onto the marked area and rub it in until the stain disappears. Then wipe it off. Don't waste time scrubbing the burnt stains off the bottom of a pan. Instead, fill it with water and add three tablespoons of salt. Let it sit overnight as the salt dissolves the burnt marks. And in the morning, pour the water out of the pan. This way, it will be much easier to scrub all that grease off. Picture this. You're on vacation and your shirt has become all crinkled inside the luggage. You need it tonight, but the hotel doesn't have an iron. Don't panic. Hang the shirt up in the bathroom. And while you relax in a hot shower, the heat and moisture will unwrinkle your shirt. It won't be perfect, but it will get much better without any effort. The football is on, and it turns out you've run out of standard batteries. You can use a smaller battery instead that easily fits inside. Now take some aluminum foil and crunch it up. Fit it into the gap on the negative or flat end of the battery. All done! You can turn on the TV now. Once your flip-flops crack and the plug easily slips out of the hole, it's normally a sign that you need a new pair. But there's a way to extend their mileage. Push the plug back through the hole, then take a bread clip and attach it to the end. The clip will provide enough support for the plug to remain in place. You've received a package and the receipt is taped on. You've managed to detach it from the box. But how to separate the tape without ripping the paper? Hold both ends of the tape apart, and by pulling it slowly, the tape stretches and separates itself from the paper without tearing it apart. Ziploc bags are perfect to keep things dry, but it would be great if they were larger. Take two and turn one of them inside out. They can now connect and work as one large bag, big enough to protect a keyboard. There's no need to carry your keys in your hand when you go for a jog. Instead, put them inside your pocket, take a rubber band, then tie it around the pocket from the inside. This stops the keys from falling out. You've broken your key in the door. It's stuck. Great. Arranging for a locksmith could cost up to $100, but for a cheaper and quicker option, try using a hot glue stick. Heat the end with a lighter, and once it's warm enough to melt, push the glue into the keyhole. The melted glue 
will enter the available space covering part of the key. Once it cools, it compresses and gains a strong hold of the key's end. Now, just pull it out. If you need to siphon liquid through a hose and want to avoid using your mouth, put one end in the liquid and hold the other upwards with your thumb closing the top. Now shake up and down. This jiggle motion pushes liquid upwards, a little each time. And once it reaches the top, lower the exit point and let gravity do the rest. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock. Or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power leaving them only halfway in. Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak, fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass starting up the barbecue, just as long as it's a sunny day. Missing a corkscrew or a cork breaking halfway? By using a stove lighter, heat the top of the bottle. The heat slightly expands the glass, and this forces the cork out the top. You've super glued your fingers again. Take some salt and pour it on top of your stuck fingers. Put your fingers into the water and slowly rub. The mixture will dissolve the glue and release you in no time. While hanging up a painting, it can be impossible to find that stubborn nail. Place a fork upside down and insert it so the nail is in between the middle fork teeth. The fork has provided a long arm that's separated from the wall, making it easier to slip the string of the painting over the nail. Once it's perfectly balanced, simply remove the fork. You need to put a cake into a container, but taking it out again later by lifting it up from the inside might ruin the cake. Put the lid upside down and place the cake on the lid. The base of the container is now the lid, making it much easier to access slice by slice. Pour out water more efficiently from large jugs and bottles by swirling. This will make the liquid inside spin, creating a vortex. The vortex allows for the air to flow back into the bottle as the water pours out, much faster than the glugging alternative. There's an easier and less messy way to remove eggshells from a boiled egg. Once fully boiled, crack the shell on both ends by tapping them. On one end, pinch off the shell. Use the opened end to blow with your mouth. The force of air will push the flesh and expand the eggshell, forcing out the egg undamaged. When the hinges of your laptop break, repairing them can cost up to $300. A far cheaper fix is to buy a picture frame and tape it to the back of the screen. You've dropped a small piece of jewelry on the floor, seemingly impossible to find. Take a stocking and place it over the end of the vacuum hose. Give the area a good vacuum and check the end periodically. You will eventually find it sitting at the end. You've drilled a hole in the wall, but the drill hole is now too wide. Remove the screw and find an object that is slightly shorter and thinner. Pieces of plastic, small wires, paper clips, or even toothpicks are perfect. Place whichever item you find inside the hole. It's filled the gap enough so the screw will now re-enter securely. Taking the trash out can put you in a gross scenario of getting bin juice on you. A great way to avoid this is by placing old papers at the bottom of the bag. Now, not only does it absorb all the liquids from the food and other sources, but also helps prevent bad smells from forming within a bin. Nobody likes mosquitoes, and pesticides are pricey. A cheap alternative is to take a plastic bottle and cut the top part off from the bottom of the funnel. After removing it, turn it upside down and put it inside the bottle. Mix two cups of warm water with two tablespoons of sugar. The mosquitoes will be attracted to the formula inside and become trapped. Now just sit back and relax without getting bitten. Ready to discover some life hacks that are low-key useful, but high-key strange and ridiculous? Well, let's go! You wake up feeling brave and dangerous. 
You're going to wear an all-white shirt on your morning walk to work whilst drinking your Americano, but the plan backfires as you spill the coffee all over yourself. So you've instantly just gone from feeling like a ferocious polar bear to a helpless white furry puppy. But no worries, all you need is a black marker, make sure it's not permanent, and a world map. Find a place that shows you a set of islands. Hey, why not use the Bahamas? Now, add some contouring using your marker. Write the word Bahamas outside of the stains. And voila! Those coffee stains on your shirt now represent one of the most famous sets of islands in the world. You've just transformed a fashion disaster into a funky, stylish masterpiece. Now, go get yourself another coffee. Have you ever looked up at the moon, convinced that there was a face looking back at you? Most of us have, which is weird given that the moon is nearly 250,000 miles away from Earth. This supposed face, of course, is just an illusion. It's shaped by the dark splotches of lunar maria. These are smooth plains formed by the lava of ancient volcanic eruptions. I want to show you a life hack that will allow you to feel like this famous face of the moon. All you need is an empty roll of toilet paper and your phone. Oh, and that beautiful face of yours. Simply put your face near the hole of the toilet roll and your phone beneath the bottom hole. All that's left to do is snap a picture and take a peek. Next up, are you a snacker? I mean, you just can't stand going into business meetings or classrooms where you're not supposed to eat. I might have found a solution if you're someone who likes Jesus. All you need is a chapstick tube, <clears throat> an empty one. Simply fill up the empty tube with cheese, and just like that, you have a discreet cheese dispenser at your mercy. <laughs> now, it's estimated that over 65% of people use lip balm. Some use it daily, others carry it around with them just in case their lips get dry. Who's going to suspect you're actually munching on cheese if you pull a lip balm container out? On average, for those who manage to actually fall asleep on planes, 61% will experience a below-average sleep. A lot of people have trouble falling asleep there altogether. But it's not impossible if you can replicate a sound sleeping environment. I present to you a sleeping mask. Just grab a hair bobble, bring all of your long hair to the front, and tie it as normal. It's literally like having a set of curtains over your face, which is what we need since the absence of light will send a signal to our bodies that it's time to rest. Now, according to research, two out of every three Americans name popsicles among their favorite foods to eat during the summer. Who can blame them? It's delicious! The only problem? How quickly it melts. But I've got something that's going to help out all of us popsicle lovers. All you need is a popsicle of your choice and a cupcake wrapper? That's right! When you take your popsicle out of the freezer, it's in a solid state because the particles that conform to it are together. As the heat increases, which in 99% of cases is the moment it leaves the freezer, these particles begin to loosen and melt. With each drip from your popsicle comes a tear from your eye. Now it's time to wipe those tears away. All you have to do is pop the popsicle stick through the cupcake wrapper. The wrapper will then catch any of the drips that drop from your popsicle, or any tears of joy that drops from your face. Let them soak in the wrapper while you soak up the sun and enjoy your popsicle carefree. Now, one in every three Super Bowl parties have chips laid out for their guests. And there's a good chance you might serve some to your friends that are currently on their way over. But what flavor will they like? If you only have mm. one kind of potato chip brand at your house, no problem. Let's spice this up. To give your friends a wide range to choose from, you're going to lay them out in a muffin tin. Just fill each hole with a different type of condiment. Your friends are going to think you're the best host ever. Research has revealed that salsa is often the most popular dipping sauce, followed by French onion and guacamole. So make sure you don't forget to lay these out on that muffin tin. Ever get home from a long day of work, excited to have a steaming hot bath? There's just one problem. Your bathtub is missing its bath plug. Don't panic, I have a solution! Dip back into your party supplies, and you'll be dipping into a nice hot bath in no time. 
you just need to get your hands on a balloon. But stop, don't fill it up with oxygen. Instead, simply fill it up with water and tie a knot on the balloon. Oh, and resist that urge to throw it at someone. Now, go put the water balloon in place of the bath plug. Make sure you fit it nicely and firm. You can check it by turning on the tap to see if the water begins to fill. If it does, it means it's time for you to finally enjoy that hot bath you wanted. Now, would you like to make it the best bath ever? By having a beverage of your choice floating beside you throughout? Let me show you how. Go back outside your car. Actually, put your clothes back on first. I promise you'll be back inside for that bath soon. Grab your phone holder from Mm -hmm. inside the car. Run back to your bathroom and stick it against the wall by the bathtub. Position it in a way that will fit the glass containing your drink. Make sure the holder's secure, as I'm confident you don't want to be bathing in spilled Coca-Cola. Now that you've ensured this, I'll leave you to enjoy this much-delayed bath and move on to the next life hack. Speaking of beverages, those cans of soda you just bought get warm way too fast. Let me help you out. Quickly pop to a nearby store and buy some ice. Then just find an empty cardboard box and a plastic bag. Open up the box and then cover it with the plastic bag as if you're going to use it as a trash can. Then get your ice and pour the necessary amount inside the box. All of a sudden, you have a fully functioning drink cooler at your disposal. Go grab those cans of soda and put them inside it. Check back in a few minutes to find them nice and cold. In the meantime, just enjoy the sun. Sometimes, as you're going for a walk, you'll encounter surfaces such as muddy trails and forests that have the potential to ruin your shoes. Even if they're walking shoes, you still want them to look good, right? Well, let me show you a trick to keep those sneakers of yours sparkling. Once more, all you need is a balloon. Blow the balloon up and keep the air hole clutched with your hand so as to keep it inflated. Put the balloon on the ground, keeping the air hole covered, and put your hand inside your shoe. You heard that right, hand, not foot. Then press down on the balloon with the shoe. This will cause the balloon to deflate, and once finished, it will be tightly wrapped around the bottom of your shoe. This will act as a perfect form of protection against any dirty surfaces you'll be walking over on your travels. Now just do the same with your other shoe, and away you go! Now when you get home, you'll probably be so excited to get inside, kick your feet up, and relax. This is why struggling through all the keys on your key ring upon arriving is so annoying and tiresome. Well, don't worry, I've got an easy and satisfying fix that will make this process much more instant moving forward. All you need is some nail polish. Well, a couple of different colors. Designate a specific color for each key and get painting. Then just let the paint dry off for a bit. When it's done drying, you have a new color-coded set of keys to your name. Convenient, isn't it? Road trip! You and your best friends are rushing down the highway. Suddenly, one turns off the AC and puts the windows down. No! They wanted to help you cut some gas costs and just made one of the classic mistakes. Turning off the AC and opting for a natural breeze helps while you're stuck in traffic. While you're driving with your windows down on a highway, you're creating unnecessary wind resistance. Your car now needs more energy to move forward, and you end up burning more fuel per ride. While you're struggling through traffic inside the city limits, though, turning off the AC isn't a bad idea. It might not be the most comfortable ride on a hot day, but you're here to save some money, right? Now, a quick common sense test. You have two routes to choose from. One is shorter and another looks longer on the map. What's it gonna be? Common sense is screaming. The first one, duh. But in fact, the shortest route isn't always the best choice in terms of gas usage. You gotta pick the one with the least stop signs, traffic lights, and traffic jams. This route will require less speeding up and slowing down, both major gas eaters. So plan your route wisely. You can consult apps that show real-time traffic data or interactive maps with stoplights. Do you also have a bag of sand, your old inflatable bed, a pair of shoes, and five water canisters in your trunk? Or is it just me? 
Well, you gotta declutter if you want to save some cash. Losing 100 pounds that you carry around in your vehicle will decrease your gas usage by up to 1% per gallon relative to your vehicle's weight. More weight means more fuel used. That's some simple traffic math. Brake and accelerate less. Driving at a steady speed above 50 miles per hour helps you save some gas costs. Every time you hit the brakes or take off at a rocket speed at the stoplights, you're making your engine work hard, and it feeds on fuel, you know. Plus, aggressive driving is bad traffic etiquette, so speed up slowly and coast to a braking stop smoothly. Don't go 0 to 60 or floor the car until you have to brake abruptly. Cruise control can help you with that drive calmly and steadily when you're on flat terrain like the highway. Once you approach some hills or mountains, cruise control will make your car eat too much gas for no good reason. So turn it off and let the speed go down a bit as you ascend. And then slowly speed up as you go down. This will take some workload off your engine. Park your vehicle a couple of blocks away from your destination. The next time you make the seventh trip driving around the block searching for a parking spot, it will make all perfect sense. When you sum up the frustration, your time spent on those searches, and of course, extra gas costs, you'll be okay settling somewhat further from a busy shopping area, business center, or your favorite popular restaurant. Don't wait until the last minute to refill your tank. Make it a habit to do it once it's three quarters empty, or whenever is more comfortable for you. This way, you won't have to frantically stop at the gas station nearest to you when it's time to refill. Instead, you'll have your time for some research. There are special gas-finding apps to help you find the best deal in your area. Sometimes, it can be across the state or region border, and it's never, ever by the highway. Once you're ready to settle down with one gas brand, don't hesitate to ask for something in return. Sign up for their loyalty program, save an app, get a card, whatever it takes to get a discount, cash back, extra points, and other perks from them. Some grocery stores partner up with gas chains, letting you use the points you earn at the store to get a discount on gas. Even 5 cents per gallon can make a difference, so inquire about those. Hybrid vehicle owners, this one's for you. Try turning on the AC while your car is still plugged into the charger. It will help extend the vehicle's range when you get on the road, which means less money spent on gas. If you're driving one of the newer model cars, your engine must automatically stop when you idle your car. If that's not your case, avoid idling to save fuel. Waiting for the traffic lights to turn green takes 45 to 120 seconds. And starting your car requires only 10 seconds of gas. So, if you have to stop for more than 10 seconds, turn your vehicle off. If you let it run, it can eat up to an extra half a gallon of fuel per hour. Now, in case safety isn't one of your primary concerns, at least take good care of your car for reasons of economy. Check if your tires are well inflated at least once a month. When underinflated, they wear out quicker, drag, and waste gas. Check your car's manual to see how often you should tune up your engine. It depends on the age and model. Clean the filters to keep the car going while eating less gas. Use the right motor oil. Otherwise, your car will have to work harder than it should and waste gas. There's no need to play it cool and fill up with premium fuel unless you have a high-performance engine that really can't run on anything else. That will cost you much less in the long run and won't make your vehicle go faster, cleaner, or get better mileage. If your car's manual recommends but does not require premium, at least go with lower grades for extra savings. Gas chemistry has advanced over the past decades, so don't worry about the quality of regular gas. It's all good. If you have an older car, check out your gas cap seal. Once it weakens, it lets oxygen leak into the gas tank. When that happens, gas burns way faster. You can replace the gas cap, but be prepared that the sensors might not recognize the new one, unless it comes from the manufacturer or authorized supplier. If you have a manual transmission, you're in luck. You have complete control over your RPM. That's revolutions per minute. Lower gas means higher RPM. The higher the RPM, the more torque the engine produces and the more fuel it's using. So shift into the upper gears quickly 
It differs from car to car, but an optimal solution would be to change to second by about 15 miles per hour and move to top gear by the time you're going at 30 to 35 miles per hour. That cargo container and the bike rack you have on the roof of your vehicle will have to go. They increase your car's wind resistance, so the engine must do more work to maintain the speed. It could mean up to 20% extra fuel consumption on the highway and up to 8% in the city. If you do need that extra storage, opt for rear-mounted cargo boxes. For those in car buying mode right now, look into a hybrid electric, plug-in hybrid electric, or all-electric one. I mean, you'll definitely cut gas costs with an electric car. Suppose you aren't ready for that much of a change. In that case, many popular models actually come in hybrid form. Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Sonata, and Volvo XC90 are all yours to go. And here comes the bonus tip that will help you cut driving costs by 100%. Are you ready for it? Don't drive! Okay, okay, let me explain. Don't drive whenever it's possible. Walk or bike to work or use public transport. If that's too much for you, at least swap driving responsibilities and gas costs with colleagues living in your area. Do you know any other tips to save gas? Maybe you have personal favorites. Do let me know in the comments below. Hello, your luxury bag package has arrived. We have a super romantic recipe for you. It'll especially be great for Valentine's Day or your someone special's birthday. Breakfast could not get any cuter than this. Now this hack is going to take your veggie sandwiches to a whole other level. Just be careful with the boiling hot oil. Fill the fried dough pocket with your favorite vegetables and bon appetit. Oh, this video is making me hungry already. You might want to write down the ingredients in your recipe book for this one. You know, just to remember everything later. One color is not enough, by the way. If you want this cookie to be a joyful burst of color, that is. Don't worry, the colors are going to be bright and gorgeous after they're baked. Make sure not to burn them. I somehow always manage to do that. Cookies and milk, everyone? Potatoes must be one magical vegetable, wouldn't you agree? Because there are probably more than a thousand different dishes you can make with them. And they're all delicious. There are two types of people at a cafe. Those who get a slice of cake or those who get a cookie. But I personally get both. Talk about having a sweet tooth, am I right? We already made colorful cookies, so why not make a rainbow cake now? Are you throwing a big party at your home soon? Then this dish is just for you. Because it's super easy to prepare, it's big, it's filling, and it's delicious. Oh, and did I mention it probably would take 15 minutes to prepare? Look at the cheese melt. Makes my mouth water. I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Vegetables have a bad reputation, you know. Most people think they're boring and tasteless. But we're here to fix that common misconception. Something can be both nutritious and yummy at the same time. Take these carrot rolls, for example. They could be a great alternative if you're not fond of eating sushi. Just make sure to dip them in soy sauce for the full experience. Here's a quick meal you can prepare just with everyday breakfast items that you already have in your fridge. And it's super fresh and healthy. Perfect dinner for hot summer nights if you ask me. Add the topping of your choice and enjoy. Another example of how vegetables are tasty gifts from Mother Nature. This kind of looks like a forest, wouldn't you agree? The key here is to leave no empty space behind. By the way, having a good oven is key if you want to experiment in the kitchen. Let's say it's the middle of the night. There's no takeout place left open, but you're craving some fast food. 
This is just the recipe for that. Come on, admit it. You thought this was going to be a version of pizza, right? Anyone want crunchy pasta? This is healthier than store-bought chips, you know. By the way, here's a fun fact about pasta that not many people know. The first reports of people eating pasta actually came from China. Speaking of sausages, I'm on a fun fact roll here, so here's one about hot dogs for you. The world record for hot dog eating is 76. Let's just hope the person who broke it was okay after eating them. Anyway, back to our delicious hot dog egg crepes. Well, if you have a better name for these, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. From the looks of it, that avocado needs a bit more time to ripen up. But since it's going into the blender, that shouldn't be a big problem. I suggest you blend that for a couple of minutes to achieve a smooth paste with no clumps. I assume that's cream cheese. Who needs a dipping bowl, am I right? Great for Super Bowl season. You won't need to do the dishes after having guests over. I prefer my popcorn with melted butter. Well, that goes for corn on the cob, too. I can already tell this is going to taste amazing. Hey, they should start selling these in movie theaters as well. This will not be one of your regular fried potatoes, people. Trust me. I know you have the urge to cut small cubes, but make sure to keep the potato in one piece. Otherwise, this won't work. Have you ever heard that Cleopatra supposedly took milk baths to keep her skin looking young and healthy? Well, don't get me wrong, these milk ice cubes are not for that. That's one way to cool down coffee. Somebody's making a real mess in the kitchen. Why not put the whole bag in the water? It'll be much safer and cleaner. That's one sharp knife you got there. But here's another way you can use it. Looks like you're going to have to get your hands dirty. And in some cases, touching raw meat with your bare hands may not be a good idea. That's where this cold water hat comes in handy. Pun intended. Sometimes you might not have the time to make dough. In those cases, using bread would work perfectly fine to prepare delicious snacks. You know what? This is not fair. I can't continue my diet plan anymore, especially after learning about incredible recipes like this one. That may look like a plastic sheet, but it's actually rice paper, so very much edible. These chips could be a healthier alternative for your kid's lunch bag. Trust me, there's no way they won't like how these taste. This next quick recipe is going to bring a whole other level to frozen yogurt. We're adding berries here, but feel free to pick any fruit you want. I call these frozen yogurt crackers. Do you have a milk frother at home? If your answer is yes, then great, because that's all you need to prepare instant banana milk for yourself. Yep, you don't even need a glass. You can put them in an ice bowl to keep your drink cold and fresh. Are we making chocolate crepes? Count me invested. By the way, any type of chocolate bar will work for this. The trick here is to have enough oil in the pan as well as to heat it beforehand. Add some powdered sugar on top to make it look like it's out of the hands of a Michelin star chef. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. Something sweet? Check. Now it's time for another savory recipe. You can use both mashed or grated potatoes to make this one. The choice is up to you. Just make sure they're freshly prepared. Add a cup of flour and an egg. Then cook the mixture until it's golden brown. Your potato waffles are ready to be served. You can turn ordinary matches into waterproof ones. 
apply a thin coat of nail polish to the matches and let it dry. Once they're ready, they'll stay dry enough to start a fire even if you drop the matches in the water. If you get lost somewhere during the winter and need a drink, then don't eat snow. It has much more air than water, so you won't even feel much more hydrated. Your body also wastes a lot of energy trying to eat it. Even worse, you might lower your body temperature and could even get sick. If you find yourself face-to-face with a coyote or a wolf, don't turn your back. Slowly retreat while facing the animal. This might only work for a single animal, though. If you meet a pack, then the most important thing is to make sure that they don't surround you. Back away towards a tree and press your back against it. Then choose the right moment and climb it as quickly as possible. Several layers of clothing will warm you better than one warm fur coat or down jacket. Air will be trapped between the clothing layers, insulating you and keeping your body warm. If you get lost in the woods, always try to sleep a little above the ground. You can lay on a layer of branches and leaves as a makeshift bed or stretch a hammock out between some trees. At night, the temperature drops and the ground becomes cold. Even if you build a fire, it could go out while you sleep, and the ground will be sapping your body heat. You're in a boat in the middle of the sea, no food, no fishing net, and you're hungry. It was supposed to be only a 3-hour tour. Well, guess what? You can catch fish with the help of shoelaces and any object – phone, watch, or keys. The shadow cast by the boat in the sea can attract fish, and a reflective object can work as bait. Tie your keys to your shoelaces and use them as a fishing rod. Even if a fish doesn't bite, activities like this are a good way to maintain a healthy mind on the open sea. A short meditation can save you from a panic attack. You need to focus on your breathing and try to slow it down. Your brain will quickly calm down and turn its focus away from the panic. Oxygen masks in airplanes work on the same principle. When you control your breathing, your attention is redirected away from whatever bad thing is happening. You can make a torch out of a log. Put a small log vertically, make a deep star-shaped cut on the top, put dry grass leaves and sticks inside. Once you're done, set fire to the log and watch it burn for up to 3 hours. This should work the same regardless of the size and type of wood. Now, if you meet an angry grizzly bear, never try to run away because the bear can easily outrun you. Instead, lie down and don't move. Grizzlies only usually attack when they see a threat, so they'll often leave you alone if you show them that you won't cause them any problems. This only works with grizzly bears, though. If a confrontation is unavoidable, back away slowly and use bear spray. If you don't have any, Pepper spray will work similarly and should disorient the bear and scare it away. Or not. Don't eat berries or mushrooms in the forest if you don't know exactly what they are. They could be poisonous. If you have no other option, eat the inner bark of maples, birches, and pines to fill your stomach. Use a knife to cut away the rough outer bark and get to the softer white stuff. You can boil it to make it even softer, or cook it over an open fire to make a crunchy snack. And if you're really starving, you can look for ants. They might not be the most appetizing, but they're pretty nutritious. If you don't have a watch, you can use your fingers to find out how much time is left until sunset. Raise your hand so the inside of your palm is facing you. Your fingers should be between the sun and the horizon line. See how many fingers can fit in this space. The thickness of one finger equals about 15 minutes, so you can calculate the time left before sunset. If you're lost and need to build a fire to attract attention, throw in a lot of pine, cedar branches, cones, and any unnecessary rubber objects. Your fire will emit more black smoke, which makes it visible from afar. If you have no water in the desert but have some food, try to avoid eating for as long as you can. The more you eat, the more thirsty you'll get. The body needs liquid to digest food, so it'll use up what little you have. A person can live much longer without food than without water, so don't be afraid to stay hungry. Hey, you found a huge puddle of dirty water in the forest. If you're desperate for a drink, you can fill your bottle and filter it into drinking water. To clean it, make a rope of gauze or clothing. Put one end into the dirty bottle and the other one into the empty one. Before long, the clean water will flow into the empty bottle through the rope, 
while the impurities are left behind. Before hiking, replace your regular shoelaces with paracord shoelaces. If you don't have enough rope, these laces can give you a few extra feet in a pinch. If you're lost in the forest and have nothing to warm you, then take dry leaves and grass from the ground and put it between two layers of clothing. This will help you stay warm for a long time. When you're lost in the desert, try to move as little as possible during the day. Find a shadow or create it from improvised materials and sit in the shade until dark. At night, you'll spend much less energy and use up less fluid while you walk. This will help you to avoid the risk of a heat stroke. If you fall through some ice, don't try to get out like you would in a pool. If you put your hands on the ice and try to push yourself out with your arms, it could crack and make you fall back into the water. You need to stretch your arms parallel to the ice surface and stretch your legs way back so they float in the water. In this horizontal position, start waving your legs as if you're swimming. Move your arms carefully without putting too much weight on the ice, and you should be able to escape. If you need to build a fire while it's too windy, here's what to do. Dig two holes next to each other and create a small underground tunnel between them. Make a fire in one of the pits. The wind can't extinguish it, and the fire gets its air through the second pit. This method is also useful if you need to build a fire without drawing attention. In the dark, this kind of fire won't be visible. Don't throw away or pop bubble wrap. Take it on a hike with you. It will protect you from the cold better than even a thick blanket would. Those tiny air bubbles are perfect insulation. Just put it in between layers of clothing, and it'll stop any warmth from escaping. The plastic it's made of is also waterproof, so it can stop you from getting wet, too. Swimming in the sea, not far from the shore, you can easily get swept up in rip currents. If this happens, the most important thing to remember is not to swim against the current. This will only waste your strength and sap your energy, and you're unlikely to ever overpower an ocean current. Instead, try to swim sideways along the shore. Sooner or later, you should get out of the current, and then you can safely swim to the beach. If you're stuck in a falling elevator, don't try to jump at the moment of collision. Don't take a sitting position or stand either. You need to lie on the floor, facing the ceiling. Spread your legs as wide as possible, cover your face with one hand, and put the other hand behind your head for protection. You reduce the pressure on your body in this position when you fall. Ooh, you're lost! A rescue helicopter flies over the forest, but you don't have a flare and don't have time to build a fire. Use a small mirror or phone screen to reflect the sunlight. Aim the light beam towards the helicopter. Rescuers should notice the glare and fly over to save you. You park your car in a dark alley, lock it, and leave it for just a couple of minutes to go grab a coffee. When you come back, your beloved vehicle is no longer there. A siren sounds. Oh wait, that was the alarm. Phew! Luckily, that was all just a dream, and you can help it to never come true. First of all, you can install a steering wheel lock in your car. It can either be a long metal rod stretched over the steering wheel or a chain lock connected to the seatbelt buckle. Both options are good to slow down the bad guys that might break into your vehicle. But don't make it 100% thief-proof. The thieves can just cut the steering wheel or even the lock, so you need to add some extra layers of protection to be sure. Criminals like to use gadgets that catch signals and help them steal cars without a key. For example, if the car is parked in a garage of a private house or under the windows of a multi-story building, the keys are accessible through the radio device. Thieves can easily intercept the signal, and the owners of the car won't notice anything. To protect your keys from relay attacks when they're stored at home, use something metallic. You can simply wrap the keys in foil to block the radio signals or keep them in a safe metal box. Park in areas that are well lit and have security cameras. Building entrances and parking lots are your best choice. An isolated garage isn't always the best idea because it could put you personally at risk. So if you do park in one of those, stay close to the attendant or where security cameras can see you. Keep the wheels turned towards the curb whenever you park. 
it will make it way harder for thieves to try to tow the auto with a tow truck. To steal a car, a criminal will have to make some extra maneuvers. It takes time and effort and can demotivate the bad guys. In many cases, it's not your car the bad guys are after. It's that shiny new laptop you dropped in the front seat or your designer purse that looks like it's stuffed with valuables. Things like that are hard to resist and often lead to a break-in. So take an extra moment to hide your belongings in the trunk and your vehicle will be less tempting for criminals. Don't just jump out of the car, even if it's literally for a moment to buy something. If you need to get out, always stop the engine first, close the windows, and lock the doors. Storing your vehicle registration in the car is a good way to make the lives of thieves easier. They can present it to police officers in case they get pulled over. Your insurance information and VIN can help them get new keys to unlock the car no problem. If you aren't the only person using the car, find some secret place to hide the registration and only tell the people you trust 100% about it. You can also take a photo of your title registration and insurance information and store them on your smartphone. Another option is to make copies of those important docs and keep them with you. Mark your windshields, windows, and mirrors with a VIN number, which is the identification number of the vehicle. This service won't cost you a lot, but will demotivate the bad guys. They'll have to spend money to change the marked glass, and they will think twice if they want to invest in your vehicle. You can also play spy and leave marks on different parts of the car with an invisible pen or cover it in micro dots with your ID details. This won't stop thieves, but it will make it easier to track the vehicle if it gets stolen. If you know that you'll have to leave the car somewhere new and you don't feel like it's a safe place, hide an old switched on phone or tablet in it. Make sure you have a way to track it. Then, the Find My Phone feature will help you locate the phone and the car in a matter of seconds. You can either get a cheap data plan for real-time tracking or rely on GPS. It should work even without a SIM card. Protect your side mirrors from thieves with special covers. You can find models that come with locks made from anti-cut materials. The cover will also protect your side mirrors from scratches and scruffs and extend their lifespan. Plus, you can go creative and choose covers with your favorite team's logo or something else that's important to you. Not a bad idea to customize your vehicle on a budget, right? Car thieves use different schemes to distract your attention. A piece of paper stuck to the rear view window, a plastic bottle over the wheel, or a shirt on the trunk of your car. These and other small things will likely get you out of the car. The bad guys can also pretend to be nice and helpful and to tell you to pull over because there's something under your car. The idea here is, again, to get you out of your car and let them steal it. So instead of going out, close the windows, lock the car doors, and don't go out if there's someone suspicious hanging around. Criminals aren't the only bad guys who can do your vehicle harm. Harsh winter weather can be a problem too. If you don't want to find your wipers stuck to the windshield and scrape them off every morning, leave them up when you're not driving. You probably heard it's a bad idea because it ruins the arm spring and can tempt someone to steal your wipers. Don't worry, the springs don't lose their elasticity and there aren't really many people who are after your wiper blades. In case you forget to put the wipers up and find them safely stuck to your windshield, try running the AC. Cold air will defrost the windows just like warm air. It works by dehumidifying the air. If your lock is frozen and you can't get inside your own car, treat it with some hand sanitizer. That substance can melt the ice without a problem. To prevent your windshield from getting frosty, Mix three parts vinegar and one part water and spray that solution on the windows overnight. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Always keep your gas tank more than half full in cold weather. Moist air will be happy to fill any empty space above the fuel in your tank. And that air will condense to water in the cold. Water is denser than gasoline. 
So it settles at the bottom of your tank. When enough of it accumulates, it'll go through the fuel line to the engine, and that's not really good. To protect your favorite car from rust, wash your vehicle regularly. Something as simple as that can be the difference because dirt damages the protective layer of clear coat and paint and makes it easier for rust to sneak in. Don't forget to wash the undercarriage of the car and the wheel wells. Make sure the car paint isn't chipping or peeling. You need that layer to protect your vehicle from the elements. In the cold season, salt from the road can also cause some rust spots. To avoid that, you should at least rinse the car every week even in the winter. And don't forget to wax it at least twice a year. That's another good way to keep your paint looking good as new and protect it from UV rays. One more thing is to keep the inside of the car clean. If you spill something inside, always mop up the liquid. You don't want it to seep further and hit the metal parts. This is exactly how rust forms. You got used to browsing the web, playing games, and connecting with your friends on social media, all at the convenience of the iPhone in your pocket. But what if I were to tell you that there were many more hidden uses inside it? Back tap. Have you ever noticed that fancy Apple logo on the back of your iPhone? If you've got a cover on, go ahead and pull it off so you can check it out. Okay, you're now probably thinking, there's nothing secret about this, the obvious brand logo on my iPhone. Sure, it might not seem so special, but did you know that it's more than just a handsome decoration? It's also, as a matter of fact, a button. Don't believe me? Give it a try. But before you go tapping at it like you're using your phone backward, you'll need to adjust your settings. There's a reason this handy feature is considered a secret. First, pull up your settings, tap on Accessibility, and then the Touch menu, and navigate your way to the very bottom of the list, where you'll find the Back Tap button. Found it? Great! You can choose the Double Tap or Triple Tap option, whichever you prefer, and best of all, you'll have a multitude of options to choose from. You can have your Back Tap feature take a photo with your camera app, alert Siri, switch apps, and even take a screenshot. It'll make things a lot easier than performing finger gymnastics when you need to take a screenshot. Adjust Siri's pronunciations. Have you ever asked Siri to call a friend? Maybe you've said, Siri, uh -huh. call Hermione, only for Siri to comply with calling Hermione. Okay, you may not have Harry Potter's best friend in your contacts list, but we can all agree it's not the easiest name to pronounce. Siri might be one of the most intelligent digital assistants in the smartphone game, and sometimes a bit of a smarty pants. But iPhone's companion can often struggle to pronounce even the most common names. If this bothers you, then you'd be delighted to hear you can actually correct Siri's pronunciations. The simplest way is to catch Siri in the act and say, that's not how you pronounce. It will prompt Siri to ask for the correct pronunciation for each name, first, middle, and last, or the name of a place if it's not for a person. Once you've given it, Siri will generate some options, and all you have to do is pick the correct one. If your digital best friend is still struggling, it might help to spell it out. Open your contacts, select the person Siri is struggling to pronounce, and choose Edit you can add the correct pronunciation in the notes section using phonetic spelling and click pronunciation spelling to train Siri to get it right. Even a super smart digital assistant needs some help sometimes. Hey Siri, it's Leviosa, not Leviosar. Measure app. Is a toolkit too clunky to carry around? Or maybe you've forgotten which drawer you placed the measuring tape in. That's okay iPhone has got some more secrets that will help you out. Did you know that iPhone has a few tools in its arsenal that will serve your carpentry needs? Take the Measure app, for instance. You no longer need that long, awkward-to-use floppy tape to get a measurement on your coffee table, bookshelf, or couch. 
The app uses augmented reality to measure objects around you using your phone's camera. The first thing you'll need to do is move your phone around so the app can analyze the area you intend to measure. You'll eventually find a white circle with a dot in the middle of your screen. From there, it's not so different from an actual measuring tape. Just line up the dot with the corner of the object you want to measure and trace it to where you want the measurement to end. If you're a builder, you might want to stick to the physical tape for more accurate measurement. This option isn't necessarily for the professionals. But the app is excellent for getting a rough estimate. The Measure app can also be used as a level. Simply switch over to the Level tab in your app and place your phone on the surface where you want to get a reading. When you get a green screen and a zero reading, your surface is nice and level. It's not so different from the Compass app's level feature, so you might have had some bad experiences with this feature before. With your new digital toolbox, your iPhone will make you the handiest person in the house. Create Custom Vibration We all live pretty fast-paced and busy lives these days, and whether we're at work, in a movie, or at school, more often than not, we have our iPhone set to vibrate. Sure, there are some cool ringtones to choose from, but there aren't many occasions where a sudden tune coming from our pocket wouldn't distract those around us. Or worse yet, it leads to our phone being confiscated by a disgruntled employer or teacher. Luckily, there are plenty of vibration options to choose from. You probably have various ones for different occasions and different contacts. None of those settings quite your jam? Apple has a solution to this too. Another hidden feature in the iPhone is creating a custom vibration for your alerts. If you want to feel the beat to your favorite song when your best friend calls or texts, or when it's time to wake up in the morning, you create that pattern on your iPhone. Once again, you'll need to go into those handy settings, then in Sound and Haptics, choose the tone you'd like to customize. Tap Vibration. Then, Create New Vibration. The next step is to create those sweet vibrations like a soundless DJ by tapping your finger on the screen until you have the silent rhythm you're happy with. Now you've got a vibrate option to your liking. It might even make the early morning wake-up calls just a little more pleasant. Just like the Beach Boys, you'll be picking up good vibrations. Trackpad with smartphones, we no longer need two hands to use a keyboard. All you need is one good thumb. Yet, it can still prove a little tedious sometimes as typos are easy to make, and all your characters can't fit all at once on that crammed keyboard at the bottom of your phone screen. You might be typing out a long body of text, only to realize you left out the R out of the word drive a few sentences back, which might give your friends the wrong idea about what you're doing. It can be a fiddly task to fix it, and it's often easiest to delete the entire word and write it all over again. Or so it may seem. If you're a stickler for good grammar in your text messages, you might want to shift your keyboard into trackpad mode for easier editing. That's right, another hidden gem on your iPhone. It's easy to access too. All you have to do is hold your finger on the space bar. All the other keys will gray out and you'll be able to move the cursor to wherever it needs to go. Then, lift your finger off the spacebar to continue typing. Another tedium to writing on that tiny iPhone keyboard is shifting tabs to use numbers and symbols. It may not seem like much, but it's sure to be a little frustrating when you have to jump back and forth multiple times in the same message. However, there is another hidden feature in your iPhone's keyboard that will alleviate this. Hold it down instead of tapping on the numeric 1-2-3 tab, and it will bring up the Numbers and Symbols tab. As long as you're holding it, the tab will remain open to pick your character, and releasing will return you to letters. Soon, you'll be fast enough to write a novel on your smartphone. Did you ever tie a string between two plastic cups so you could talk to your friend from opposite ends of your home? It may have seemed pretty cool at the time, but that plastic cup couldn't tell you the weather or let you send an email, right? Indeed, we've come a long way since the string telephone. In fact, can you even imagine life before smartphones? 
They have become almost like our clothes or the shoes we walk in. It's almost our consistent accessory. Now you know some of these handy secrets, and you'll be an iPhone Pro. However, if these secrets aren't for you, there's always the string telephone. At least it won't run out of charge. There's nothing better than a nice piece of buttered toast for breakfast, if we're not counting hot fudge sundaes. But if you find it harder to spread out cold butter over your toast, here's an idea. Use a cheese grater. Figure out the amount you need and grate the product. The process will also soften the butter, making it easier to spread, and you won't have to melt a too large amount of it in the process. But still, that hot fudge. Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason. That's because each type of pasta goes best with a particular sauce. Pasta shells, for example, are perfect with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? Because the sauce gets inside the shells, making it easier to serve and eat the dish. The ribbed outer surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. If you ever end up burning your cookies, ow! You can save them with your trusty grater, too. Just grate off the blackened parts after carefully taking the cookies from the baking tray. But be careful and wait until the cookies have cooled down. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in some melted chocolate. Ooh! After the chocolate cools down, you'll have perfectly shaped cookies. Although, after it gets past your lips and beyond, does the shape of the cookie actually matter? Mm, Just saying. If you like adding a lot of ingredients to your sandwiches, but don't really appreciate it when the bread gets soggy, there is a way to reduce the amount of moisture. Pick your sliced tomatoes or cucumbers and place them between two paper towels for up to 5 minutes. After that, you can use them. Also, make sure to spread butter, cheese, or sauces, like mayo or ketchup, onto the bread first. This will help you seal the bread and keep moisture at bay. Some people think that the little white string that you find near an egg yolk needs to be removed before you cook the egg. Well, I'm here to tell you that these strands are called caleza, and you don't actually need to get rid of them. They help keep the yolk in place at the egg center. A caleza is not going to mess up the consistency or the taste of your food, so removing it is completely up to you. Ever notice that most juice boxes come with two flaps, one on each side? Those are actually handles. Manufacturers design the boxes this way to make it easier for us to hold them. This way, we don't end up squeezing the box, making the juice spill out. Now, you don't need to be a baking pro to know that you can use both white and brown sugar in your recipes. But have you ever wondered what the difference between these two is? It turns out that the only thing that sets them apart is that, during production, a small amount of molasses is added to the brown sugar. Molasses is basically a sort of syrup you get when processing sugarcane. It's usually removed during the refining process. That's how white sugar is produced. But if some amount of molasses remains in the final product, we end up with brown sugar, with its specific taste and darker hue. It's a good thing. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, You can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes. Be it pasta sauce or salad dressings. Hey, sometimes we miss our mouths! So, just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in-one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. 
To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck! Keep your most used items at eye level. This way, they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes, for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. You can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. It sometimes works better than lint rollers. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though, but it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store and, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. (laughs) It's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow all because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. We ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. If you ever find yourself stuck in the trunk of your car, stay calm. All cars are supposed to be equipped with an emergency latch to help open the trunk from the inside in the unlikely case it happens. These latches are so well thought out that they can be opened by people of all ages. More so, handles are designed to glow in the dark, too. You can even pull them with the mouth if there's not enough wiggle room to use your hands. Never mind how you ended up in the trunk in the first place. Moving on. If you're ever working with needle and thread, remember you don't need to stick the needle directly into the spool. You may end up losing the needle altogether, not to mention you can easily hurt your fingers. A lot of modern sewing kits these days come with a designated place for safeguarding the needles. It's located at the bottom part of the thread spool. You'll just need to pull it out. It's even made to hold multiple sewing needles at a time. Disposable ballpoint pens come with a little secret of their own. Did you ever notice that in some of them, there's a small hole in the plastic part? It's actually a rudimentary ventilation system. It's supposed to let the ink easily make it to the tip of the pen. 
Okay, I know it's in the name, but you really don't need to shake the seasoning shaker to get any product out. Don't believe me? Hey, you're not the only one. Go grab your favorite seasoning bottle out of your pantry. If it has one of those removable plastic caps, it's perfect for the experiment. Instead of shaking the bottle, try holding it from the plastic cap while it's upside down. Now, gently twist the bottle from side to side and, before you know it, you get some gorgeously flowing seasoning without having to wiggle the shaker and make a mess all over the stove. On the same note, hmm, most salt and pepper shakers should have ridges on the bottom of the glass portion. In case you get any seasoning stuck in there, place the bottom of the salt shaker against the bottom of the pepper shaker and wiggle it around so the ridges click with each other. The seasoning should easily pour out now without you having to open the bottle. In colder weather, you often have so many clothing layers on you that you can hardly feel the purse or back straps on your shoulder anymore. Not to mention how fast they can slide off. Some jackets come with a built-in solution for that, in the form of a small tab on the shoulder with either a hook or a button. It's meant to be opened and closed comfortably, so you can keep your purse in place at any time. You're most likely using it merely to peel the skin of potatoes, carrots, or cucumbers. But you can use your vegetable peeler for chopping fine strips of onion as well. Just cut the onion into quarters vertically and then start slicing. This might also help out with those embarrassing onion tears. Most people miss this one, but should you ever have a closer look at your toothpaste tube, you will surely see some sort of coloring there, either a dot or a block. Colors can vary. They can be black, green, red, or even blue. These color spots are actually meant to help the assembly machines back at the toothpaste factory. They recognize when and where these machines need to cut the toothpaste tubes and proceed to fold them for packaging. For most types of footwear, if there's anything that seems a bit out of place, always know that it's there for a reason. Most manufacturers don't put extra items on shoes just for fun. It would definitely be a waste of time and resources. For footwear, like boots, for example, there's often a small loop at the top back of the shoe. It's there to help you when you need to put the shoe on since you can quickly pull on it. Plus, you can also hang the shoes somewhere, most likely to dry, since most boots are meant to be worn in the colder weather. Now, I've been guilty at least once of overdressing with a bunch of layers just so I won't need to jam everything in my check-in bag. But does it become a problem when you actually have to get seated? What do you do with your coat or your jacket? Well, have a closer look next time you board a plane on the seat in front of you. The hook that keeps the tray table upright can double as a jacket hook. As long as you don't need to have any meals while in the air, you're good to go. Now, most mascaras expire within 3-6 to six months, I'm told, depending on the manufacturer. But you can help speed up that process if you're not careful enough. Continuously pumping the mascara wand, trying to mix in the product, actually pushes more air into the tube. This can make it dry much faster, and you evidently won't get the desired results with it anymore. There's an easy way to check if your mascara is still good enough to use. If you don't hear a popping noise when you take the brush out, you may very well need to go get yourself a new mascara tube. Now I know we're living in the era of Bluetooth-connected devices, but for better quality sound, they still recommend using headphones that connect via audio jacks. Remember seeing black ridges on those jacks? They aren't there just to make them fit when you plug them into your phone or laptop. Made out of a special insulating material, these bands are meant to guard the wires when sound is being transmitted. Based on the number of bands, you can figure out which end goes where. Some empty space under noodles in a cup doesn't mean the company producing them wants to cheat you out of a full portion. No, no. It's a manner of keeping the noodles intact during their transportation. It also helps with the circulation of hot water that is poured over the products before you can enjoy them. The V-shaped neckline was initially designed to serve a bunch of objectives. First, as a way of prolonging the life of the garment that would maintain its shape over the years. It's also there to fit your head through the shirt in case it needs some stretching. This way, it ensures a snugger grip around the neck. Lastly, it helps absorb sweat in case you're wearing the shirt while exercising. Now, it's not necessarily a custom anymore. 
but you may have stumbled upon a dinner jacket with an additional mysterious pocket on the right side. Turns out, this pocket was used by men to easily reach their train tickets, since most of them had to travel to work every day. It helped them keep their jacket buttoned up, but also benefited from the use of a pocket. Now it's only added as a decoration, and it doesn't serve an actual purpose anymore. Speaking of things we don't use these days, or at least for their initial purpose, did you know Play-Doh was originally a cleaning product? In the 1920s, the market was in need of a product that could help them wipe the wallpapered areas around coal-burning furnaces. The recipe for what we now know as Play-Doh was thus invented. It was manufactured in white only, and was supposed to clean wallpaper by being rolled back and forth over the dirt. It was only later, in the 1940s, that new products for cleaning wallpaper were brought up, and Play-Doh was redirected toward another area of the market. Now, while I enjoy a nice piece of toast for breakfast, isn't it pesky to have to clean out the toaster? Well, not anymore, since I recently found out that toasters have a slide or a panel at the bottom that helps get rid of all those annoying breadcrumbs easily. Now, there used to be a time when you could only have access to video games by inserting cartridges in your console of choice. These tiny objects gave many doctors a lot of headaches. People soon started popping up in hospitals after swallowing small game cartridges especially the younger generation. Nintendo, the company that manufactures the majority of these devices, had to come up with a creative solution to prevent these accidents. So these days, Nintendo Switch cartridges are purposely coated with specific chemicals that can leave a really bad, bitter taste in the mouth. Not that I'd, you know, recommend you ever try and taste for yourself. Hmm. Want to pour yourself a drink before we begin? Just make sure not to grab the glass with your palm. Yep, that's right. The glass has a stem for a reason. Touching the glass bowl with your hands will alter the drink's temperature, and it will get warmer much sooner. While we're in the kitchen, let's check out your fridge. Most of those come with designated areas in the door shelves for eggs, but this may not be the best solution for storing them. The temperature in the door shelves tends to be a bit higher than in the fridge itself, so it's not the best place to store delicate types of food, like eggs or dairy. Make sure to remember that after your next trip to the supermarket. Also, while we're still browsing items in the fridge, did you know that waiting for food to cool down before refrigerating it may be bad for it? Keeping food at room temperature for more than two hours can increase its chances of going bad. So, pop it in as soon as possible. Just make sure to divide your food into smaller batches to help it cool down quicker. What's that in your fridge I just saw? Chocolate? Well, that's a big no-no. Regardless of the season, remember to never store chocolate in the fridge. The lower temperatures inside can cause the chocolate flavor to dull. Also, who wants to eat rock-hard chocolate anyway? When it comes to breakfast, next time you boil an egg, try putting a teaspoon of baking soda into the water when boiling. The eggshells will peel off way easier. Another tip is to crack the egg on one end and run it under the tap. The water stream will help peel off the shell faster and with way less of a mess. Fan of smoothies? Bet you didn't know there's actually a correct way to load up your blender. Start with the liquids, then pile up the solids as you go. The motion created by the movement of the liquids will ensure a smooth, clump-free, delicious breakfast or snack. After that, you can clean it by simply adding some dishwashing soap and some water and letting it blend away. No need to add it to the dishwasher anymore, since the full cycle of the dishwasher can damage the metal plates on the blender. If you're ever in the mood for a peanut butter sandwich, but the peanut butter is all split with the oils on top, remember, there's a correct way to store it. Placing the peanut butter jar upside down in your cupboard will ensure the oils are spread out evenly. Love a good steak but never get a perfect consistency? You're probably digging in too soon. You have to let the meat rest after cooking for at least 10 minutes before you start cutting it. Using the right knife will also give you better results. A sharp knife will ensure you don't lose any of those lovely meat juices. It's pasta night. Ever wondered why there's a hole in the middle of the spaghetti spoon? Turns out you can use that hole to check how much pasta to cook per person. Now you know exactly how much of it to boil for that special marinara sauce of yours. 
When using non-stick pans, never use metal utensils. Go for wooden or plastic ones instead. The metal will be way too rough on the surface of your pans and can actually damage the non-adherent surface. Are you a leftovers for dinner type of person? Aren't we all? Quick tip for reheating your dinner in the microwave. Try spreading the food around the edges of the plate. Microwaves are indeed designed to heat food as evenly as possible, but not if the food is piled up. Ever try to take out a single Tic Tac from the tiny container? Just turn the box on its side. There's a cleverly designed slot on the plastic top precisely for that. No more shaking the Tic Tac box like a maniac. If you're up for some music but don't have a speaker around, don't worry. Placing your phone in a cup or bowl will amplify the sound and make your experience so much better. In a hurry, and your phone is running out of battery, there's a simple way to reduce the charging time. Simply set the phone to airplane mode. You'll see, it'll charge up to 100% in no time. We all keep our phones in all sorts of places. Our pockets, bags, under our pillows. Hence, a lot of fuzz or lint can get stuck in the charging port. For safety reasons, turn the phone off before cleaning it. You can use specifically designed tools for cleaning the charging ports, speakers, or a microphone. Just be sure to be gentle. Nice desk you got there! Did you know that those little legs on the back of the keyboard are actually there to help you see the keys better? However, if you can type without having to look at the keyboard, don't use them to lift the keyboard up. This position can damage your wrists when using for a long period of time. If you like to keep your things organized and prefer to use sticky notes, just make sure to remove them from the notes cube from side to side to prevent curling. We all feel a little overwhelmed when it comes to storage, especially linens. One easy way to make sure you'll never get mixed sheets is to store each set in the matching pillowcase. Not only will you get easy access to each set, but it's way nicer to look at on the shelves. When it comes to storing clothing, people use wooden hangers for more than just aesthetic reasons. They may be bigger and heavier than plastic ones, but they also help repel moths. Keep that in mind, more so when storing winter clothes. Were you ever curious about that one extra loophole in your running shoes? That one just next to your ankles? Well, turns out it's there for a reason. The tighter the laces on your shoes, the less likely you are to get blisters. Always fit your shoes correctly and use that extra loop in the shoes if needed before you go for a run. Your dress shirts have a tiny secret too. On the inside of the shirt, right between the shoulders, there's a tiny loop that you can use to hang the garment whenever you don't have a hanger lying around. Nothing can ruin a good vacation more than unorganized baggage. To make sure you never have to stuff your luggage with a huge pile of random clothes, instead of folding, try rolling your stuff and placing it neatly in the baggage. This way, you save a lot of space. You have easy access to everything you need, and your clothes will be less wrinkled. Not to be intrusive, but there's a bunch of things I'd like to show you in the bathroom as well. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds each time to get rid of all the germs. To save the effort, open and close the tap with your wrist if possible. There you go. Squeaky clean hands for a longer period of time. Always brush your hair from the bottom if you want to get rid of any knots. Brushing your hair from the top will only cause more damage. When it's time to wash your hair, be sure to concentrate the shampoo on the scalp. Be careful though, never to apply the shampoo directly to your head. Lather it a bit with some water between your hands before you start massaging it in. You can skip shampooing the lengths of your hair unless they're really dirty. The foam that goes down from your scalp is sufficient to clean that portion. Take good care of your loofah as well. Leaving it in a moist, warm shower can increase its chances of gathering all sorts of nasty bacteria. Either throw it in with your laundry once a week, or let it soak in a solution with diluted bleach. We're sure you always moisturize after your shower, but there's a correct way to do that too. Don't add too much cream on your face, and make sure to tap, not rub it in. Your skin will thank you for it. You don't have to be a dentist to know how important flossing is. Next time, 
Try tying your floss in a knot. With the added tension and grip, your teeth will be cleaner in no time. Now here's a trick. Instead of putting the box grater vertically on top of a plate, put it horizontally, with no plate underneath, of course. This way, you won't risk scraping your knuckles because only your fingertips will eventually touch the grater when you reach the end of the process. Also, it gives the grater more stability, when otherwise you'd have to balance the grater or even hold it in the air with the other hand. When you're done, or when there's just too much grated stuff on the bottom wall of the grater, simply turn it on its side to pour the contents into the bowl or plate. Flowers in a vase would stay fresher for longer if not for the bacteria that breed in the water. Since copper has some antibacterial properties, dropping a penny into the water will help keep the microbes at bay and let you enjoy your flowers for that little bit longer. An easy way to check if your bed linen has dried completely is to put a small mirror in between the layers for about 5 minutes. If the mirror has steamed up when you pick it up, it means the sheets are still a bit damp. Let them dry until the mirror stops getting cloudy. A damp bed is a lovely breeding ground for fungi and bacteria. Okay, I'm in. If you have a not very healthy habit of eating in front of your computer, you'll be surprised at how much crumbs and grime there is inside your keyboard. Now, you can just turn it over and shake it vigorously, of course, but that's not very good for any piece of tech, you know. So instead, Take a post-it note and run its sticky part over the keyboard. It will collect the little pieces of trash like magic. Even a better way to do it, though, is to take a slime and stick it to the keyboard. Then take it away, squeeze it, and stick again in another part. The slime will fill the entire space between the keys, and its sticky properties will let it gather every little bit of garbage. Separating egg yolks from whites is easier using a plastic bottle. Break the necessary number of eggs into a bowl and then take an empty plastic bottle and squeeze it. Hold the bottle over the yolk and release. It'll pull in air and the yolk together, leaving the white in the bowl. Repeat with the rest of the yolks and you're done! And that's no yolk! (laughs) If you're tired of spitting out the stones when eating cherries or want to make a cherry pie, push the stones out with a straw. Also, many garlic presses have a special tool on their handle that can be used exactly for that. Cleaning a blender can be a nuisance if you do it manually. Instead, fill it with hot water and add some liquid soap or detergent, then run it for about 10 seconds. Rinse it afterwards, and it's clean. Plaster walls can crumble, flake, and spread dust all over the floor when you hammer nails into it. Cut a strip of masking tape and stick it to the place you want to hammer a nail in. The tape won't let the plaster crack and crumble, leaving the hole neat and clean. Small scratches and dents on wooden furniture can be removed with some toothpaste or a walnut. For toothpaste, rub a pea-sized amount of it into the scratch until it's gone, then wipe the leftovers with a damp cloth. For a walnut, take a half of that brain-shaped nut and rub it into the dent. Then rub the area with your fingers and buff it with a soft cloth. This will help the wood absorb the oil from the nut, making the scratch sealed and gone. The sticky residue on jars left after you remove the stickers won't be easily removed by water and detergent. So, take some vegetable oil instead. Soak a cotton pad in it and wipe the sticky surface. Let it sit for a while and then wash the oil away together with the residue. If you can't comfortably reach the wick of a candle with a lighter, hey, take a stick of spaghetti. Light up its end, and you'll get a burning stick that's easy to use for hard-to-reach places. Now, next time your razor blade's getting dull, try rubbing it backwards on a pair of jeans for regular upkeep. Not while you're wearing them, of course. Make sure you keep the blades dry, too, or even kept in mineral oil. That'll stop them from rusting. Keep all those jelly, ketchup, peanut butter, and mayo fresher for longer in your fridge by turning the contents upside down. This creates a partial vacuum inside the container, helping prevent mold growth. Storing ice cream upside down will prevent freezer burn, too. To bring your permanent marker back to life, simply put a few drops of rubbing alcohol into the felt material inside and shake. Once the felt absorbs the rubbing alcohol for a couple of minutes, the marker will be almost as good as new. Now, don't keep throwing away lettuce that goes black too quickly. Covering it with a dry paper towel and then placing it in an airtight container will help it keep fresher for much longer. 
This goes for any leafy greens you've got leftovers of. That sharpish bit sticking out of the cap of your favorite cream is there for a reason. These tubes are usually sealed with foil, so unless you love breaking your nails trying to open them, just flip the cap over and push. Your bobby pins might not stay in place if the grooves aren't facing the right way. They should always be on the bottom, close to your head. Still coming loose? Well, put a squeeze of hairspray right onto the bobby pin before you put it in your hair. Now, your cotton rounds pack has those strings on it, so you can hang it on a handy hook in the bathroom. But there's no need to loosen and tighten it back up every time. Check out the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear it open carefully, and you're good to go. Two zips too much? Maybe, but they come in handy as a clever anti-theft device. Just lock them together. Now no one can open your backpack. Don't have a lock on you? You can also tie them together with some string, or even just a paper clip. Anything to slow those pickpockets down. That tiny little button on the back of a shirt collar is used to hold your tie in place. Hey, you don't want your tie trying to escape back there. Shoe manufacturers care about their customers. So most running shoes now have a special anti-blister system pre-installed. Sounds intense, but it's basically just that extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with the extra hole, inserting the lace backward. Cross your laces and put them through the loops. Now pull the laces down to lock your foot in place. Now run. Yeah, go ahead. Car headrests are all about comfort, and detachable headrests are all about safety. If you pull the headrest out, you'll see two sturdy metal bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in your car, you can use the bars to smash the window and get out. If you've got some pesky parsley stuck in your teeth, try this tip. It can be hard to get it out with loose floss. You need more tension, so just tie it in a knot. It's not an accident that soy sauce bottles have two spouts. The sauce is liquid, and it flows out of the bottle pretty easily once you turn it over. Most Asian food lovers have spilled it at least once in a lifetime. That's why nowadays, restaurants prefer serving soy sauce in special bottles that have two spouts. This design allows you to control when and how much sauce will come out. Just put your finger on one spout when you pour the sauce through another. If you press your finger tightly to the spout, the sauce will stop flowing, and if you remove your finger, it'll flow again. And don't forget to ask your server, Hey, wasabi! All right. A hair straightener is an excellent tool, not only for treating your natural curls, but also for fixing crumpled money or documents. You can also use a regular iron for this purpose. Just make sure you don't turn on steaming mode, otherwise there's a risk of damaging the paper. Hair bands are good not only for getting your hair done, but also to open a glass jar with canned food. Your hands might slip on the tightly closed lid, and if you don't open the can from the first attempt, your palms tend to get sweaty, making the task virtually impossible. So put a hairband on the lid to fix your hand and make your grasp stronger. A simple rubber band will do as well. Now, it's time to take my sweaty palms and go. After a bad day at work, you decide to hide yourself from the rest of the world. You turn off your phone and your laptop and lock yourself inside the bathroom. You jump out of your meditation when you hear a beeping sound. It's your toothbrush saying, data transfer completed. Your robot vacuum knocks at the door. Looks like it must be after you. Robot vacuums make a map of your home to get around and plan cleaning better. They can share this map with other gadgets via Wi-Fi and store them in the cloud. When advertisers get access to those maps, they can get an idea of your home size, your income level, and lifestyle to send the right ads your way. Hmm. Vacuums don't have microphones, but their navigation systems can be repurposed to listen to your conversations. They map the room with a laser beam directed at objects. Sound waves affect that light. If you collect that data, you can convert it back into sound waves and identify what someone said. Headphones and microphones are based on the same idea. Headphones turn electrical signals into sound, and microphones turn sound into electrical signals. If you plug your headphones into the microphone jack, they'll work as a microphone. Bad guys learn to do it remotely without your consent. There's malware that retasks your computer output channel into input channel. 
It can record sounds from across the room even when the headphones are in their jack and the microphone is turned off and disconnected from the computer. Then it compresses the audio and sends it over the internet. There are computer mice that look like regular ones but have microphones and a built-in SIM card in them. The mics are so powerful, they can even record whisper and broadcast that audio in real time. To activate it, you have to call the SIM card number and it goes on silently. To deactivate it, you can send an SMS to the same number. Some employers confirmed eavesdropping on their staff using that technology. A smart toothbrush remembers every move you made with it and shares it with you when you're done brushing. It also connects to your iPhone or Android using an app and sends data on your brushing habits to your dentist. They can watch over your brushing process and give you tips on how to take better care of your teeth. Smartwatches, fitness trackers, and other smart wearables monitor your health and can determine if you're walking, running, or driving with their built-in sensors. If third parties get control over that data, they can also monitor your hand movements as you unlock your phone, enter your PIN code at the ATM, or your password at the computer. The gadgets are smart enough to accurately guess all that secret data most of the time. They can also find out the email address you use when you registered with the app to identify who you are. Pacemakers and other health devices send patient data over the internet. In theory, Criminals could obtain it during transfer and change it to look like the patient needs hospital treatment. That would make them leave their home, and bad guys could take advantage of the situation. Smart toys that have cameras and microphones in them can record videos and sounds and send them to the toy maker. To keep prices on smart toys lower, they don't add expensive security mechanisms to protect that data. If cyber criminals get a hold of it, they can steal pictures, videos, or audio, and even identify GPS coordinates of the house. LED lights equipped with sensors and connected to video cameras can watch over and listen to conversations over a large distance. This technology was used at one large airport for security and comfort reasons. Cyber criminals went further and learned to use ordinary light bulbs for eavesdropping on conversations. To do it, They need a clean line of sight between a powerful telescope and the bulb of the right thickness. It won't work if you have drapes on your window. When you're talking or listening to music, there are changes in air pressure on the surface of the bulb and it's shaking a bit. A special converter can turn data on the sounds from electrical to digital. Internet-connected thermostats can be operated remotely, and that made them desirable for cyber criminals. They once got access to millions of debit and credit cards data through a large retailer's heating and cooling system. Other bad guys found a way to remotely lock smart thermostats' controls and demanded ransom to unlock them. Smart fridges can tell you when it's time to buy milk as they track your food preferences and have great connectivity. Smart dishwashers, coffee machines, washers and dryers are also collecting and transmitting your data, even at moments you don't think they're doing it. Criminals can make use of that data to find out a lot about your schedule and guess when you aren't at home. Your voice assistant makes your life easier, but it must listen to you 24-7 to make that possible. They never record anything you say before you activate them with your voice. Everything that follows is stored in the cloud and can be of use for different companies. They can learn what music you like to listen to, what news stories interest you the most, and where you make your reservations. Some companies hire human reviewers to listen to commands to see if voice recognition works well and improve its accuracy. Xbox admitted they also hired people to listen to users' audio to improve voice command features. The problem is that it made some recordings by mistake and strangers were listening to personal chats. Home security cameras can take videos, pictures, and audio recording and upload them to the cloud without you even knowing. Manufacturers say it's done to improve object recognition. You can get access to that camera footage remotely using an app. There are programs that can guess a CCTV password and forward the video stream to a third-party computer. They can also get control over the camera and disable any signs of monitoring, like red light, so it seems inactive. Almost every car has an event data recorder that tracks information on its location, average speed, road condition, and even your preferred route. Your computer on wheels constantly streams that data to its manufacturer. 
they use it to try to prevent accidents and make other improvements. It's not clear who owns all that car-related information, so in theory, it could end up at a third party. Smart TVs run an operating system just like computers and also have a file system, cameras for video face recognition, and a microphone. They are always connected to the internet, and if cyber criminals get access to a TV, that can change certain settings and record audio even when the TV is off. They could also watch you through the camera and use the smart gadget to move to other devices on the same network, like your laptop. Well, I'm totally creeped out, so what can we do about it? You can disable automatic content recognition to stop your TV from giving you viewing recommendations and limit voice activation function for a safer experience. You'll find that option in General or Advanced Settings under Viewing Information or Viewing Data. You can also disconnect it from the cloud altogether. Always change default passwords and usernames on new devices to secure your network. Make up a new password for every gadget every now and then. You can also split your modem and use one Wi-Fi signal for laptops, iPads, and the like, and the other for security cameras. Don't forget to turn off the Wi-Fi router when you leave the house to minimize the risk of a digital intrusion. Whenever possible, enable two-step authentication that demands physical access to the device to log in. Always install software updates as soon as the gadget manufacturer offers you to do it. Updates have patches for detected vulnerability issues. Cover your laptop camera with a dark-colored tape when you aren't using it. Delete your conversations with a voice assistant. You can do it at the manufacturer's website or app. Another option is to activate the delete by voice function in settings. Then you'll be able to tell the assistant to delete what you just said or your last conversations. You can also mute the device when you aren't using it and choose not to send data to manufacturer to help them improve services. If you have a thermostat that connects to your voice assistant, tap the microphone icon on its screen and set voice control to off. You won't be able to activate it remotely, and it won't be able to listen to wake words and send your audio anywhere. Okay, have a nice day! You know, that vertical groove running from your nose to your top lip is called a philtrum. Serves no purpose in humans, but it does mean love charm in ancient Greek. Ooh la la! The little white half circle at the base of your fingers is a luyana. that's Latin for half moon. So, the next time you feel an itch between your shoulder blades, try asking someone to scratch your hmm, agnestus. Yeah, that spot in the middle of your back you can't reach yourself. Be grateful to your uvula for not choking every time you swallow. It's that punching bag thingy hanging at the back of your throat. It keeps food from getting up in your nose. How about a little stretch? Make an L with your index finger and thumb. Congrats! You've just exercised your pearly cue, or the space between those two fingers. Now, if you tried to do the L trick with your pinky, you wouldn't have succeeded, but you would have activated your minimus, the medical term for your smallest fingers and toes. When you're feeling tired or allergic to something, you often start rubbing your carnicle. That's the pink fleshy triangle in the inner corners of your eyes. Too many fancy new words to remember? Your glabella must be wrinkled right now. Yeah, that's the name for that space between your eyebrows that shows your confusion. Like this. Now, maybe you wipe your columella when you have a runny nose. That's a tissue between the nostrils that connects the nasal tip and base. Those plastic tubes on the end of your shoestrings that keep them from fraying are called aglets. Lacing a pair of sneakers without them would be a struggle. Next time you're getting your coffee to go, don't forget to grab a zarf. For centuries, these coffee sleeves were made of silver, copper, and even gold with intricate engravings. We didn't get the cardboard version until 1991. Feel like procrastinating? Say you'll do it over tomorrow. That's one word for the day after tomorrow. That annoying ringing you hear in your ears every now and then is called tinnitus, not tinnitus. I know. It can show up when damaged hairs in the inner ear leak electrical signals to the brain. That set of random symbols you see in cartoons and comics when a character says something mean is called a Grawlix. Like Grawlix. You run into someone whose face seems awfully familiar. 
It takes a moment before you can remember their name, but you didn't completely forget it. That moment of hesitation before, hey, Derek, is called a tartle. When you can't get a catchy song out of your head no matter how hard you try, you surely have yourself an earworm. Don't panic, there's not a real worm inside you belting out tunes. Anyone who's ever felt pins and needles in their legs from sitting too long has officially had paresthesia. It can happen to other body parts as well. If you're one of those people who can't muster up the energy or will to get out of bed in the morning, you could have something called dysania. If you're just not a morning person and were up late last night binging on YouTube, sorry, not the same. Next time you can't read a doctor's prescription, you can officially tell them their griffinage has gone too far. That's the fancy word for illegible handwriting. Did that come from Gryffindor? The word knee and knight have one thing in common. They both have apthongs, also known as silent letters. If you search your name on Google and find some other person in the top results, You've just met your Google ganger, and that person is probably more popular than you if their info shows up before yours. Ah, shucks. The small piece of metal at the end of the eraser end of your pencil has been around since 1858, and it's called a ferrule. Same name for the metal part holding paintbrush bristles on the wood. Put on your best ball gown and start dancing. Mmm, I think I just heard a screw. That's the swishing sound silk makes when you're moving. When you throw the dice and hope to see five dots on it when it lands, you're waiting for a quincunce. That's the word for any geometric pattern of five. It could be dots, trees, flower petals, you name it. The vertical dividers in your windows between panes of glass are officially called muntins. In the past, they used to hold the glass in place. Now, they're mostly just for decoration. That EFPTOZ pattern you read during vision checks has a name, the Snellen chart. It was named after its creator, Dutch ophthalmologist Herman Snellen. If you can read the eighth line from across the room, you have 20-20 vision. By the way, if somehow you can sense those letters with your nose, you must be using the Snellen chart. <laughs> the thing we all call the division sign is officially an obelisk. It has a long history and was once used to mark passages that didn't sound true and needed fact-checking. The infinity symbol that looks like an 8 on its side is a limniscate. Those bright red you are here markers you see on subway, museum, and park maps can save you if your phone battery is drained or if you have no internet for some reason. They're called ideolocators. One thing no one likes about bananas is those dry strings that reveal themselves when you peel it. There's a name for those, phloem bundles. Blackberries and raspberries are clusters of different little bumps. Yes, those things have a name, and it's druplets. Whenever you're enjoying a peach, apple, or any other fruit, there are things you leave behind because your body can't digest them. Those pits, seeds, and rinds are under the blanket term of chanklings. The bumps on one side of a ping-pong paddle are pips. Pro players say the shorter the pips, the better. Longer ones don't let you control the ball as much. You know those spikes in a fork as prongs. But impress your friends with another word for the same thing, tines. Depending on if the fork is for eating salad, dessert, seafood, or holding meat over a fire, it'll have a different number and length of tines. When you fill a bottle, don't forget to leave some ullage. That's a space between the top of the container and the liquid inside. Don't you just love your cat's vibrisi? That's a smart way of saying whiskers, and it describes the same thing on dogs, rats, and plenty of other mammals. Humans are the only primate without them. A nurdle usually is enough when it comes to toothpaste. That's the wavy-shaped dab you squeeze onto your toothbrush. Pizza lovers, remember this! Cornicione describes the outer part of the crust with no sauce or cheese. Some folks prefer cheese-stuffed cornicones, but I'm kind of a purist. Whenever you open a drop-down menu with an icon showing three lines, you're using the hamburger button. The meaningless la-la-las in a song are all vocables. 
If you hear there's a bathroom on the ride instead of there's a bad moon on the rise in a song, you've just had a Mondegreen moment. That's what they call misheard lyrics. A good tailor knows how to make a perfect arm sign, the holes in clothing your arms go through. The butterflies you feel in your stomach when you see your crush are collie wobbles. If you close your eyes and press them with your hand right now, you'll see some phosphines. There are those flashes of light. Every turkey has a snood. That's the fleshy red thing hanging from the forehead over the beak. I have one. Nah. When things aren't looking good, no matter what move you make in a game like chess or tic-tac-toe, you're in zugzwang, and it's not looking good. If you make a typo or someone mishears you, but the phrase still makes sense, you've just experienced an egg corn. For example, to all intents and purposes, still sounds okay if you accidentally put it as to all intensive purposes. Only two letters in the English alphabet have a tittle over them. I and J. Yeah, that little dot has a name. You probably didn't know your belt has a keeper, but you'll need a new one when it breaks. It's that important loop by the buckle that keeps the strap in place. A womble always comes at the worst possible time, in the middle of an important meeting, during a quiet exam, at a sentimental wedding. It's when your stomach growls. Yeah, like when I try to record these things around lunchtime. Hush now, you'll get fed soon. The warmth you feel on your face from the sun on a chilly winter day is apricity. It's not enough to melt the snow, but it sure can cheer you up. The smell of rain is officially called petrichor. You have the moist ground to thank for it. When your stomach is so full it looks like you have a big food baby in there, you're experiencing, wait for it, crapulence. A mix of an exclamation and a question mark is called an enterobang. Unlike most other punctuation marks that have been around for centuries, it was just invented in the 1960s. That's it. Now, I have to go quiet my womble and have lunch, wiping my philtrum as I go. But I can't eat too much, otherwise I'll have crapulence. No worries, though. There's a bathroom on the right. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. 